Forgiveness is something that many of us hope that we can get to, that we can achieve this level of enlightenment where we can release the people from our past, from this burden of continuing to be in our lives, even when they're not. But forgiveness truly releases you from the burden of what happened. And though it is not an easy place to get to, it is the most important place that we can get to if we actually want to get to another place. If you don't want to move on from where you are in life, if you want to continue feeling the way that you do, I highly encourage that you do nothing about changing where you are. Continue to do the exact same thing every day. Continue to have the same thoughts. Continue to allow the same people who treat you the same way into your life. And that is the only way that you won't have to face these ideas of forgiveness and acceptance and moving on and letting go. When you get to a place where you want to forgive someone, you're usually further along this journey of accepting what happened. And that is really the place that you need to get to. Acceptance of what happened and that you cannot change it. And that is really what acceptance is. You have to accept that what happened happened and that you cannot do anything about it. You need to move on and you need to let go. I encourage you to get to this place as quickly as possible by first accepting that this person did what they could with what they had when they had it. Now, this is not an excuse for this person. It is simply a way for you to reframe the perspective that you have about the situation. When a little kid is learning how to walk, we are not extremely upset with them that they're not running yet. Well, they just learn how to walk or they're stumbling through it or they're crawling and we're not yelling at them. Well, why couldn't you just run the marathon? Well, why couldn't you? There is potential in you to achieve this thing. I know that you could do it. Why are you withholding from me and not running the marathon? Well, they can barely walk. And we understand that this conversation with a child would be insane, that we wouldn't expect a child who just learned how to walk to learn how to run a 26 mile marathon, which some of the elite athletes in the world are unable to do. We wouldn't put this expectation on a child. Yet, when we expect something of someone that they cannot achieve, we are willing to put ourselves in the same position of screaming and crying over a situation that we can't change. That child may one day grow up to be an athlete that runs marathons, but today that child is not there and neither is that person that you are begging them to be. They will never run this marathon that you are asking of them. They are simply incapable. They are a child who can do what they can with what they have. And for them, being able to walk in those moments is the furthest that they can go. This is the highest that they can achieve right now. And you can wait around for the next 20 years until this kid grows up and is able to run and has learned how to process all of these different ways of living life to achieve this goal. Or you can simply choose to accept that this is where they are right now and you don't have to wait until they get to the point that they need to be. This is where they are. They are unable to communicate at the level that you would like them to. They are unable to shift their life and their perspective in a way that is going to suit you better. So you have to learn how to let them go and to say, you know what, this is what it is. And this isn't to dumb down the request that you had of this person. It could have been very simple and very realistic, but isn't that even worse if you were fighting over small things isn't that even worse that they couldn't achieve them? That this wasn't necessarily a marathon that they had to run. Maybe they just had to do the dishes more, help you around the house. But I bet that the issue ran a lot deeper than that. And if you were at a job and they decided to let you go and all they said, well, you just weren't the right person for the job, wouldn't you rather know that as soon as possible? And maybe as soon as possible is two weeks into the new job. I might be speaking from personal experience here, but you have to accept that maybe this was the level of acknowledgement that they could give you, that they weren't able to process and to handle the situations that you were able to bring them to if they allowed you to. You just have to accept that this is where they were at and that you were also at that place. Maybe you could communicate with them at this high level to get them to do these things that you wanted them to do, but wouldn't it be so much easier to go and find the thing that you actually want instead of trying to force this person or this situation or this place to be something it can't be? 
When you go and you look for a dress or shoes or clothes and you put on a piece of clothing, you're not like, I have to make this red shirt work because there is no other red shirt in this entire city, state, world that could possibly fit me. It is this shirt or nothing. And oftentimes we feel that way about a majority of things. It is this person or it is no one. If this person cannot be this thing that I need them to be, and I will twist and contort myself whatever way I need to in order to make this work, wow, I just can't find another red shirt. This is the only red shirt available in this entire world. And there is a lot more people than potentially red shirts in a city. There is a lot more available to you than shoes. But we are choosing to stick to this situation, dig our heels into it and say it is this or it is nothing. And it is only you that can decide those qualifications. At the end of the day, you can say, I actually don't abide this. I don't want to be around people who don't want to be around me. I don't want to be in someone's life who can go months without talking to them when they know that person is going through something difficult. Maybe that person is just not able to be the person that you want them to. Maybe they can be, but at the end of the day, they're not willing to be that for you. Maybe they'll be that for the next person or the person after that. And maybe you'll never see them again. Maybe they'll never get to that level, but it doesn't matter because you were able to show up in the situation the way you wanted to and the way you were able to and that person did the exact same thing maybe they wanted you to be different maybe they just wanted you to be okay with not going out without having any plans maybe they didn't want somebody as ambitious as you and if they did decide to leave you if they did decide to cut you off they at least did you the favor of saying i don't want you but i don't want to change you either i just so if you can see it from that point of view, they decided to let you go so that you can find the space and the people who want you to be there. Because the people who actually want you in their life, who want you to show up at the job, at the place, and be that person that you want them to be, you will get to that point. You will find those people, but you will not find them if you are stuck in this idea that this person and this thing were the only ways for you to ever achieve this level of commitment, of validation, of acceptance, and we just don't need it from these people. This is what they could provide, and it's up to you to decide if you want it or not, and you've decided that you don't. Whether it was from their end or your end, it has been decided that this is no longer going to continue. You are no longer going to be each other's lives. So are you going to accept it, that this is who they were, and get to yourself into acceptance that this is what it is. And it is not an easy place to get to, but it is as hard as you decide to make it. Everything is simply just a story that is being assigned meaning at every turn. You are deciding that this pen or this notebook or this car or this job meant so much. Why can't you choose to change that story? Maybe it was a job that provided certain benefits to you that you really liked and appreciated, but it outweighs, but the bad outweighs that good. The bad of those people didn't like me. They threw me out and they didn't care how it affected me. They were people who were willing to say, you know what, you're just done. We don't actually care. We have no intentions of making this a better situation for all of us. And at the end of the day, it is better to know as soon as possible than later on. Because at the end of the day, there has never been a person who has ever been in a bad situation, a really bad one that says, I wish I left later. No one ever says that. There has not been a relationship that was really bad for you where you said, you know, I wish I stayed until we were bankrupt, until something was thrown out a window, until something was thrown into a wall, until, you know, something really drastic happened. There is never anybody who has ever said, I wish I stayed further in this bad situation. And that bad situation could be surface level bad. It, it might not be insanely detrimental, at least not yet. Say you're with somebody who doesn't want to do the dishes or doesn't want to help you around the house. That might seem surface level right now, but that is only going to get deeper and deeper. 
it is better to acknowledge right now that this isn't going to work anymore and to accept that this is just the reality. You can choose to leave now instead of later, and if you that choice has been made for you, at least you know now. At least you know, date three, that this person isn't somebody that can have a communicative style with you, who can share their feelings, who can show up for you. At least you know on date three and not the third year into your marriage where everything is blown apart. And oftentimes we are ignoring these red flags and choosing to say, you know what, like, yeah, he doesn't answer my calls or text me back. And that job doesn't really respect my time. And they call me on the weekends, but at least I have a job or a person. We don't have to be those people anymore. We can say, you know what, I actually don't want to be in a position or a place or a person that is accepting of these things. You can choose to change the story right now. You can decide, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to be in this place where this person doesn't want me. And it is going to be as difficult as you choose it to be. Why does it have to be this unending pain? And the longer you're in this situation, the harder it's going to be to get out. It is going to involve even more emotions, even more time, even more money. And at the end of the day, do you want to deal with that? Or do you want to move forward and to let it go? I want you to understand that what happened to you happened and it's it. It could happen for a reason that means you're free now. You can go and do whatever you want. Or it could be for a reason that is like, well, you should just stay in this position and be sad forever. And you should probably just retire at 26 because no one's ever going to want to work with you again. See, we can create whatever story we want for whatever situation is occurring. So since you get to be the author of this story, why not choose to write a better one? Why not say, hey, I do have time now and it sucks that I have time because that means I'm not getting a regular paycheck. But man, maybe I can do something with that time that I want to do and that somebody else is no longer preventing me from doing. Write down a list of all the things that you now get to do or no longer have to do. If you were at a job where you would have to travel every three weeks, well, now you don't have to be on a flight and eat shitty food all the time. If you were with a person who didn't like going out or didn't like a certain type of food, now you get to go and eat that food. Now you get to go and hang out with your friends. Now you can go and watch the movies that you like because this person and this situation was holding you back from something. And it might have been holding you back from superficial things, but it was most likely also holding you back from the greatest version of yourself because there has never been a time where you have been in a situation with someone, whether friendship, romantic, a job, anything that hasn't held you back in a way if you were ever sad about having that thing in your life. If that thing ever made you upset, if it ever made you question your standing or yourself, that thing has held you back from the potential of you just being a happy person, of being more excited about life, of having a sunny day and it being a good day because of that. You finding the little things in life that bring you joy was probably not something that was accessible to you when you were in these situations with these people who you seem like you can't let go of. And letting go of them will let go of this idea that you've had of them. And most of the times that is what you're grieving. You're de grieving this version of yourself that you no longer have. And you never had them. This person never was this fantasy creation. They were always a person who was disappointing you and upsetting you. And there's not going to be a single person or job or situation or, or city that isn't going to disappoint you at some point. But when the disappointment outweighs any good, that is usually when things end. And that is why this thing ended in your life. So you have to accept that this thing has ended because it needed to end and you staying stuck in it is only hurting you. So you have to take your power back. This time is your time. Your life is yours. It does not matter who you're with, who you work for, it is your life. And until you get to a point where you can let go of these different things, these attachments to the status that certain things in your life created for you, you will always be subject to being very sad very easily if this thing is taken from you. 
if all of these material things, if all of these relationships suddenly went away, how devastated would you be? And of course, there are relationships with other people is how we create this world and this life, but the relationship you have with yourself is the basis of all of these. So if you are always in the state of, I think something's gonna be taken from me, it most likely will be, but what can't be taken from you is your idea of yourself and how you choose to react to the world. They can ghost you, they can fire you, they can cheat on you, they can hurt you, they can leave you, they can just end it. But it's up to you how long that power has any effect on you. They displayed their emotions and their abilities and who they are. It is up to you to decide if you're going to continue to let that power hold on to you. Are you going to let this person continue to keep you back for the rest of your life simply because at one point in time you cared for them? How many more people that you could care for are you holding yourself back from? You have to realize that this past life is keeping you from the next one. There is somebody out there who wants to be around you, who is excited to see you, who wants to work with you, but it's not those people. You have proof that this person doesn't want to be in your life in whatever capacity it is. You have proof and you are looking for validation, acceptance, love from the one person that you have absolute proof doesn't want to be there. That job doesn't want you, so stop thinking about it. That person left your life. They hurt you. They betrayed you. They did something to tell you, I don't want to be in your life. So why are you looking for a place of acceptance and a place of peace from somebody who has guaranteed you that they are not that? You don't know why this next person or this next job is going to hurt you. And they probably will. That's kind of how this game goes. But you don't know why yet. You don't know to what extent yet. So choose to explore it. And yeah, someone else is gonna hurt you, but at least it will be on different terms in a different way and not in the same exact way that you know that this person will. So if somebody has left you, your biggest act that you could possibly do is to let them go. Let them live with those decisions and many people will say, oh, well, someday they'll regret this choice and they'll miss you. That might not be true. This person might never think about you again. They might cut you off, let you go, fire you, whatever, and never think about you again. Maybe you overvalued yourself in their life. That's okay. They don't have to miss you in order for you to say, this is just not what I want. You don't want someone in your life who doesn't wanna be there, who doesn't wanna show up for you, who doesn't care about you. You don't want that. So why are you searching for this from somebody who does not want to be there? And you need to look at it from that perspective. You might actually have to sit down and ask yourself, why do I need this from somebody who has shown me they can't give it to me? Are you chasing after something that you may have felt was taken from you? At the end of the day, it's been taken, it's gone, and there is nothing that you can do about it. You simply have to move on. And once you have stepped into acceptance, you've looked at your lessons, you've understood that this is who they are and this situation is what it is, you have finally come to this idea that forgiveness is something you can only hand yourself. Forgiveness is not for that person. Forgiveness is not to make them feel better. Forgiveness is simply so that you can have a marker in your life where you say, I am done with this situation and this person and I am moving on. I no longer have the capacity to give this time and person and situation any more of what I can't give anymore. I need you to accept that this is the only thing that you can do for yourself, is to forgive yourself. Forgive that you were too much for this person, that you trusted. Forgive yourself for what you knew then and what you know now. Do what you have with this new information and move on. Let it go, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And that is something that you're gonna have to keep going back to for all of time. You have to move on from what happened by accepting that this is what it is and that I am moving on because I deserve better than this. I want better than this and you've already proven that you want better because you've accepted the end of the relationship. Have you messaged them? 
Have you reached out to that company? Maybe, maybe not, but you don't have to continue to do it. You can change the story right now. You never have to message that person again. You don't owe them nothing. You don't owe that company anything. You don't owe these people who've hurt you anything any longer. And you don't need to give your power away by continuing to be in their life. Forgiveness is a subject that many of us hope we can get to. It is a place that all of us want to someday be a part of. Forgiveness is something we can only hand to ourselves. And it is in that handing to ourselves that we achieve the peace and the ability to move on. It is your chance to move on. Forgive yourself, forgive the situation. You were a different you when all of this occurred, but now you get to become the next version of you. Whoever it was, whatever happened, you get to move on. Don't take it for granted. You don't know how much time you have left. And if you want anything to hyperspeed you into the next transition of your life, accept that you don't know how many days you have left. It could be another 80, it could be another 18. It could be five more minutes, you don't know. But give yourself the freedom to move on and only you can give it. They can't give it, they've tried to take it, but they can't, only you can hand it away. Hope that you get to this level of forgiveness and we'll talk soon, have a great day.